The only way to become a hacker is to start hacking, like right now, immediately start breaking stuff. And in this video, you're going to do that. I'm gonna show you how to build the best hacking lab you've ever seen. And it's only gonna cost you about 30 cents, probably less actually. Now, the first thing you're gonna hack today is the YouTube algorithm. Let's make sure you do hit that like button, notification bell, comment, subscribe. You gotta hack YouTube today, ethically, of course. Now legit, I'm gonna show you how to build your very own hacking lab with real vulnerable machines. Machines that you can practice breaking into to hone your hacking craft. And you don't need anything. Like you don't need this big beefy gaming computer with virtual machines, no. You can have the crappiest laptop or even your iPad or just really anything that has a web browser. And I'm not kidding, it will be the best lab you've ever had. Now I know what you're thinking. Like Chuck, what's the catch? This sounds too good to be true. Well, there is one catch. Knowledge. knowledge. You have to know how to do what I'm about to show you. It's not easy. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it. So that worries out the door. Now, I actually got this idea from watching the hands on hacking course at IT Pro TV. The incredible Mr. Daniel Lowry was showing me how to break into vulnerable machines, which is awesome. But the only problem is that to follow along with this and actually try it yourself, you have to build out your own lab, which not everyone can do. So that's where my mission began. I got my cup of coffee. Always need that. And I set out to find the best solution, the best lab you can possibly build at the lowest cost. And it needed to be accessible to most people, if not everyone. And that is where the cloud comes in. Now real quick, IT Pro TV is the sponsor of this video. And seriously, they are my favorite training provider. They are what I use to study and learn IT. And especially things like this stuff right here, hacking. I'm actually building out the lab to be able to gain access to all these vulnerable machines. So what I would do is build out this lab and then sign up for IT Pro TV and follow along with Daniel Lowry and learn how to do this stuff. And it's not just hacking that they have, they've got everything. From getting started in IT with CompTIA courses, Look at all these things. To Cisco, networking, mm, love it. Python, so just, it's, it's, they've got everything. So if you're ready to get serious about your IT career and you wanna learn IT like me, check it out, link below, itpro.tv forward slash network chuck. Use the code network chuck and you'll get 30% off forever, which is kind of crazy. So just, just do it, okay? So here we go. The super secret awesome hacking lab that will only cost you 30 cents per day. Our lab depends on two things. First, we need vulnerable machines, things we can actually hack into. That's where the incredible site VulnHub comes in. Let me show you what this is. What you're seeing here is a massive library of vulnerable machines that you can hack into. They're just sitting there begging to be hacked. Why aren't you doing that? They want you to hack them. And ranging from easy to help, they pretty much have everything you need to hone your hacking craft. And did I mention it's free, which is, crazy. You just jump into one and click on download and it's yours. But we do need a place to actually put those machines so we can hack them. And that brings us to our next thing we need, the cloud and specifically AWS. Now I know some of you are probably like, ew, the cloud? Ugh. No, let me, let me show something to you. With the cloud, with just a few clicks, you can have an unlimited lab, whatever your heart's desire, recklessly spinning up a ton of virtual machines to do insane things because it's not our computer, it's Amazon's massive data centers across the world. So basically you can learn hacking without any limits. Now with our environment, here's what it's gonna look like. We'll first create a virtual machine that will be our attacking box, our attacking hacking machine. In this lab, that will be Kali Linux. And then we'll create another virtual machine, our target, which we'll download and get from VulnHub. Now the cloud isn't free, but I did the math and here's what it's gonna cost you. Don't let the sticker shock scare you. This will be a total of about four cents Per hour. Time to get a second mortgage, honey. But seriously, that's it. And that's only when it's actually running. You see, when you're done, you just shut your machines down and then it's costing you barely anything because that's how the cloud works. AWS will charge you per second of the stuff you use. So in our example, let's say you spin up this lab, it's about four cents per hour. You hack for a marathon of eight hours in a day, that's about 30 cents. And then when you're done, just shut it down and that's it. Now, if you don't think that's awesome, then you need awesome lessons. Now, sure. You can do this completely free on your own computer, totally. You can spin up VirtualBox on your machine, and as long as you have extra RAM, extra CPU, like a gaming computer, you can do this on your own. But not everyone has that. And honestly, I have all of that. I have a huge home lab, but often I just end up spinning stuff up in the cloud because it's easier, more convenient, and frankly, more fun. Now there is one kind of big gotcha. You know it was coming, and it's not that crazy. The cloud costs money. We just talked about that, four cents per hour. And that does involve you having a credit card. When you sign up for AWS, you gotta put a credit card down. But they will only charge you for what you use. And as long as you don't spin up like 20,000 virtual machines, you're probably gonna be okay. Now the other thought might be, hey, there are other websites that have pre-built labs I can just click on and, and play with. And those are actually great. But there's something special, skills to be gained from building out your own hacking lab. It's something that if you can do it, if you can afford to do this, which four cents an hour, I think most of us can swallow that. If you can do this, you need to. Not a requirement, but it will help you out. You'll be better for it. All right, I think I have you convinced, right? Like we're gonna do this right now. You're gonna do it with me? Okay. And actually one last thought, you're probably also thinking, 
thinking, why doesn't everyone just do this? This seems almost too easy. And the reason is that it's just kind of hard. You have to have a bit of cloud knowledge because honestly, it's not the easiest thing to do, but thankfully I'm gonna show you how to do this. I'm gonna hold your hand and walk you through every bit of it right now. So by the end of this video, you'll have full confidence to create some crazy hacking labs all by yourself and it's gonna cost you pennies. Like, like that's that's literal, I'm not like exaggerating. It'll cost you pennies. So here we go, what do you need? Well, I already covered that. You need absolutely nothing. Well, I mean, you'll need a few things. Like you'll need an AWS account, which does require a credit card. Now what's cool is that this is your first time ever using AWS, there is a free tier. You get like a lot of stuff for free for 12 months and this lab may end up being free for you, but it still does require a credit card to get signed up. Now for the sake of time and sanity, I'm not gonna show you how to do this in this video because I already showed you in this video up here somewhere. I walked you through every step of how to set up an AWS account and also spin up a Kali Linux instance with GUI access. So before you continue with this video, make sure you have that AWS account and then come back and see me. I'll still be here. I'll wait, actually, just pause the video. Unpause, all right, let's go. Oh, I forgot to mention, you also need coffee. So if you haven't already, go get up, go ahead, get up, brew yourself a cup and um, let's get started right now. Okay, here we go. Time to build our ultimate hacking, super secret, awesome hacking lab. Did I already say hacking? It's okay. So if you're not already here in the AWS console, go ahead and get there. Just be here. Are you here? Okay, let's start. The first thing we're gonna do is create the network that we're gonna play with, that we're gonna put our virtual machines inside. And actually, hold on. We're, we're gonna do one thing before that. Depending on your internet speed, you might wanna start this as soon as possible. We're gonna go out to vulnhub.com. I'll have all the, the links below, all the documentation. Everything you could ever want is below, except a girlfriend. Now the vulnerable machine I'm going to demo will be the breach, vulnerable, <laughs> can't say that. I've been saying vulnerable too much. I'm just gonna search for breach. I'll do breach one, you're gonna jump in there, and then I'll just click on download. I wanna download the mirror, go ahead and start that process right now. So please just go ahead and start that. Now while we're here, I want you to pay attention to a few things. Let's scroll down just a little bit. Every one of these vulnhub machines will tell you something about their stuff. And more specifically, the things we care about right now are the networking. For this particular box, DHCP will be disabled, so it won't get an IP address by default from your network, but it does come pre-baked, hard-coded with this IP address. So knowing that, we need to create a network inside AWS, which we can do, and it's amazing and kind of easy, that will allow us to hack this box with that subnet. Let's do that right now. So over here in AWS land, and by the way, AWS is a huge beast of a monster. Don't worry if you feel overwhelmed. I'm gonna walk you through each step. Just hang with me. I'll guide you. Go up here and click on services, and then we'll scroll down a bit here on the left until we see networking and content delivery. Go ahead and click on this. And then over here on the right, we're gonna scroll down just a bit until we see VPC. We're gonna create our own virtual private cloud. So go ahead and click on that. And this will be quick and easy, check this out. First, click on launch VPC wizard. I love wizards, you're a wizard, Harry, click on that. So just a few things we're gonna change here on this page. Under VPC settings, this should be selected by default. We're gonna create a VPC and subnets, etc. That's cool. Next, we have the name of our VPC. I'm gonna name this Breach. And then for the IPv4 CIDR block, we need to have this match our network for the vulnerable machine. Here's what we'll do. 192.168.110.0 slash 24. This network will contain the IP address of this guy. So we should be golden. Just a few more things we gotta change. Let's scroll down just a little bit here. Under availability zones, let's just click on one. It should be two by default, click on one. And then scroll down just a bit more, we should be solid. So leave everything else as default and click on create VPC. And bam, just like that, in the cloud, you created your own virtual private cloud, your own network. Which by the way, is a pretty huge accomplishment. Well, quick coffee break, just for you, cause that was awesome. And now inside this network, we're actually going to put our hacking stuff. The first thing we'll create is our hacking box our Kali Linux. I'll walk you through that real quick. I'm not gonna walk you through how to set up a GUI. If you wanna do that, watch this video right here. So just as before, we're gonna go up here and click on services. And then we'll click on compute over here on the left. And then we'll click on EC2, which is what Amazon calls their virtual machine stuff. Click on that. And if we scroll down just a little bit here in the middle, I'll see a big orange button that says launch instance. Click on that and then say launch instance. Here in the name, I'll name it Voldemort. Oh, sorry, he who must not be named. Didn't want to offend anybody. And then we'll scroll down and choose our Amazon machine image, which is the kind of virtual machine it's going to be. Will it be Linux? Will it be Windows? In this case, it's going to be Kali. So right here in the search box, just search for Kali. Hit enter, and it should pull up just right here. Go ahead and select this guy, and then click on continue. Now, just a few more things here. 
First, let's select how big this machine is gonna be and this will determine how much you pay for it. So by default right now, it's a T2 medium, which essentially means it has two virtual CPUs and four gigs of memory. If I click on the drop down here, you can go larger or smaller, whatever your taste is, or whatever your wallet can stand. But for the attack box, I'm gonna stick with medium. Now this is gonna end up costing me about four cents by itself per hour. Also a great option would be the T2 small, which will cost you about two cents per hour. So pick your poison. I'm gonna go with medium because I want my box to have a bit more juice. Next, we'll need our key pair. This will be a secure way we'll access our machine that doesn't involve passwords. If you don't already have one, go ahead and create one. I do walk you through that in my previous video on this. So I'll click on create a new pair. I'll name it, leave everything else as default, create key pair, and notice it did go ahead and download the key horcrux.pem for me. Make sure you save that, don't lose that. If you lose that, you won't be able to access this machine anymore. So. Just don't lose it. And I'll show you how to use it here in a sec. And then finally, our network settings, which we do need to change because we have a new network. Go ahead and click on edit right here. And here for our VPC option, we're gonna change that from default to our new one, which I called it v uh, breach. So I'll select breach. And then just underneath for the subnet right here, I'm gonna change it from the private to the public subnet. Notice I have two here, private, public. We actually created two. I'm gonna choose public. And then here in this drop box, I'm gonna change this auto assign public IP from disable to enable. Now that should pretty much be everything. I scroll down just a bit. I'll double check my settings. Yeah, we're all good. So now we can click on launch instance. And just like magic, you're creating a virtual machine in the cloud inside the network that you created your virtual private cloud. So cool. Now, while that machine is baking at this point, I'm hoping that your breach vulnerable machine is done downloading. If it's not, well then take a long coffee break. But mine is, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do real quick is open that up here and extract that zip drive or zip folder, extract all. And when it hates the default uh, extractor, it needs 7-zip, which I don't have any to download real quick. So if you hit an issue, just download 7-zip, which is amazing. <laughs> that was quick. Let's try it again. Extract files, blah, blah, blah. Okay, close. So now we should have a folder with our breach.ova file. Now what I'm gonna do to make things simple for later steps, so I'm gonna change the name of this file to just simply breach all lowercase. If you want to go ahead and do that with me, it'll make things easier to follow along with me. Hit enter to change that name, bam, we're solid. Now just so you know, this breach.ova file is our vulnerable machine. That OVA file type is what virtual machine managers or hypervisors use to create virtual machines. AWS will actually take this file and convert it to its own format and put it in the cloud, which is gonna be freaking awesome. So we're gonna walk through that right now. And actually this next step might take a little bit because we're actually gonna be uploading this file to AWS. So if your upload speeds on your internet are kind of crappy, this might hurt a little bit. But let's go ahead and start it now. No more time wasted. Getting back to the Amazon console, just like before, we're gonna go up here to the top left and click on services. And then we'll scroll down just a bit, actually almost to the bottom to where it says, actually it's the very bottom. We're gonna click on storage. And then over here on the right, we're gonna click on S three, which is Amazon storage service. Go ahead and click on that. You see to deploy this OVA file, we're actually gonna have to upload it to a storage place in AWS. Let's create that place right now. And they actually call their storage stuff buckets. I like that. It's kind of cute. So right here on the left, or I mean the right, you'll see a create bucket option. Go ahead and click on that. I'm going to name my bucket Von Hub stuff for me, just something random. I think it does have to be unique. So keep that in mind. And then for the region, just make sure the region matches the region that you use to create your virtual machine and your VPC. So I open up another tab with my console and just notice at the top here, top right, you can see Ohio. These are the various AWS regions out there and AWS is global. It's important that we create all our stuff inside the same region. You can see I had US East Ohio, or it's actually called US East 2 selected. That tells me that when I created my VPC and also my virtual machine, I created it in those regions as well. So if I look at my, uh, my EC2 instance, for example, I go to services, compute, EC2, and I'll just jump into my instances running real quick. There's my Kali Linux box, and I can see right over here under availability zone, it's in US East 2. So just confirm that before you step forward. And now that I feel good about it, I'm gonna get back to my S3 bucket creation here. The region US East 2 is absolutely correct. I'm good. And then I'll scroll down just a bit to where it says block public access settings for this bucket. Now we're not putting anything secret or secure in here. It's just the boxes that we're, we're downloading from Volnhub, which is free. So I'm gonna unlock this or unblock it. I'm allowing public access. I'm acknowledging down here that, yeah, I know, I'm, I'm opening it up to the world. It's totally fine. Just don't put any weird pictures in there or anything. And then that should be it. 
I'm gonna click on create bucket here at the bottom and it should be done within now, <laughs> like that seconds, that was awesome. So what we did here is we created a little bucket in the cloud, a little storage place, like our storage container in the cloud. And now we're gonna upload our virtual machine, our OVA file to that bucket. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna click on the bucket right here. And now that I'm inside my bucket, I can upload something. So I'll click on the upload button right here or right here, whatever you prefer. Click on upload and it takes you to another menu. Goodness, we're like in, in menu prison, but <laughs> click on add files right here. And I'll go find that in my file system, that OVA file, breach10, breach.ova, open, and I'll scroll down just a bit and click on upload. Let's start this party. You can monitor your progress right down here. I've got pretty decent internet, so it's gonna happen pretty fast for me. I hope yours is pretty fast too. If it's not, just be patient. Now I know some of you may just have terrible internet and here's a quick little hack to avoid all this. Here in AWS, we just created a Kali Linux VM. And if you follow my previous video where you can actually create a GUI with that Kali Linux and access it like a regular computer, then you could theoretically Actually, not theoretically, you could actually do this. Just access your Kali Linux box here in the cloud. And using AWS's super wicked fast internet, you could go off to the uh, Voln Hub, download the stuff, and then from your same box, upload it here to AWS, to your S3 bucket. So everything just happens in AWS. All you're doing is remotely accessing it, which is like, little bits of bandwidth. That's what makes this lab super cool is you never have to leave AWS. You can just stay in there. So if your internet sucks, all you really have to worry about is remote access. Take a coffee break because this next step is gonna get a bit hairy. This is where people kind of get afraid of the cloud and trying to make this work. Because our job now is to get AWS, to get Amazon to convert this breach.ova file into a legit virtual machine image that AWS can use. And that's going to involve us accessing the command line here in AWS. But don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through every step. It's gonna be okay. So first things first, let's go ahead and click on our breach.ova file right here. Just click on it, it'll bring up a new page. And we're just gonna leave that open because there's stuff right here that we wanna have ready to go. Specifically, the URIs and the ARNs. Just put a pen in that. Let's get back to our other AWS console tab over here. And up here at the top right, you'll see one of my favorite places, command line access. Go ahead and click on that box right there, bam. What this is doing is launching the AWS Cloud Shell. I'll just close this box out. And right now it's creating your environment. Just hang tight, quick coffee break. And once it's set up, you should see a nice pretty console that you can access right now. I'm gonna zoom in a bit here. Perfection. Now don't let this scare you. We're gonna walk through this. It's gonna be fine. The first thing we have to do is create a file. So type this with me, type in vi and then containers.json or containers.json. Hit enter. Now before you hit anything else, type in one letter, type in i. Bam. Now right here, we're using this editor in Linux called Vim, and to actually be able to add stuff to this file, we hit the letter I to um, go into insert mode. That's all we did right there, just so we can start typing things. Now don't type that, that's stupid. Now what we're gonna do, link below again, is we're gonna copy this code. I've copied it, and I'm gonna right click and paste. And what I love about AWS is that it does this. It says, hey, we got multi-line stuff you're about to paste in, do you wanna edit it first before it goes in? Heck yeah, I do, I wish everything did this. So here, let's change a few things. Under description, let's, let's just change it to uh, breach. Format OVA totally is. And then right here, the URL. This will be the URL of the bucket that contains your, your OVA file. Let's go back and uh, get it from uh, our bucket here. It should be this right here, your S3 URI. Just click that copy icon, go back to our cloud shell and change this entire URL to your new one. That's it. So now I feel comfortable to click on paste. Go ahead and paste that. It's in there. Now, the tricky part is how do we save this file and get out of there? Couple keystrokes here, we'll put it on the screen. Hit escape, actually make sure you have you're clicked in here. There we go. Make sure you just have your, your, the context is here. Hit escape colon and then the letters WQ. You should see this stuff start typing in the bottom left. If you do see that, go ahead and hit enter and you're good. You just created that file. To verify, type in ls and there it is right there, containers.json. Now the next step we don't quite have permission to do right now. We're about to import a VM, which is pretty, pretty cool, pretty hardcore. So we have to give ourselves permission. Now, if I didn't mention before, please make sure you're in the region, <laughs> in the cloud shell that you've created everything so far. So by default, it should keep everything the same, but just make sure, be cognizant of that. Anyways, so we need to create a permission for ourselves to be able to import this OVA image. I know this seems like a forever tutorial. I told you to have an awesome lab. It doesn't come easy, but it does come cheap. So let's keep going. We're gonna create another file. I know, here we go. Type in VI and we're gonna name this file trust-policy.json or JSON. Hit enter. Just as before, we're gonna hit I to enter insert mode. And then just as before, you're gonna paste this content. Link below. And copy it, paste it here. I think everything here is actually good. We don't have to change anything. Hit paste and then 
make sure we have this window selected. We'll hit escape colon WQ to write and quit and hit enter. Bam, new file written, hit LS to verify. Trustpolicy.json is there. Now it's gonna get a bit weirder. Just follow along with me every step. Don't skip anything. We're then gonna paste in this command. Don't hit enter on it yet. I'm gonna paste it right now. Here we're creating a role that will reference this trust policy that we just created, which means we do need to change the end of it right here. Yours should be the exact same as mine. So just edit it with me. I'm gonna scroll over here to I'm gonna remove all this, and actually I'll probably have it just like this when you paste it, so you probably don't have to change anything. Just make sure it looks like this. That way it's actually looking at this file here in our home directory. So once it looks exactly like this, go ahead and hit enter, and you should be solid, that's it. Now we're gonna create one more file, hang with me here, type in vi, and then role-policy.json or json. Hit enter. We'll type in I to enter insert mode, and then we'll copy the command from below. The big long thing. I'll go over here and paste that. And here we are gonna have to change a few things. So here we're gonna scroll down just a tiny bit until we see resource. And we see these two URLs here, ARN, ARN. We need this URL to match the bucket that we just created for our virtual machine. So let's get back over to our S3 bucket over here, our tab. Here we just want the bucket we created, not the file we uploaded. So for me, that bucket I created was Voln hub stuff for me. So I'm gonna copy all that, just that. Get back over to our cloud shell here. I'm gonna paste that in here in the first one, just like that. And then I'll paste it in the second one. And I'll do it just before that forward slash to where it looks just like this. So here it just contains my bucket, the bucket that contains my OVA file. And then just one more thing we have to change in this file. Let's scroll down just a bit, just a little bit to where we see another resource here. Here with the ARNs, we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'll replace this with our bucket, and then the same thing here before, just before the forward slash, our bucket. Now that should be everything. All we had to do here was change the UR or the ARN to our bucket name. So I'll click on paste, and then just as before, make sure I have this selected, hit escape, colon, WQ for right quit, done. One more thing we have to do to give ourselves permission, then we're done with permissions, I promise. So again, command below, we're gonna paste this command, and we're gonna reference that file that we just created over here at the end, which I'm gonna have to edit mine, but the thing you're gonna paste here should be Accurate, just make sure it looks just like this. If your command looks like that, you're good to go. Hit enter, oh, and we now have permission. Now we can actually import and create a virtual machine image here in AWS. One command, copy and paste, just like before. I'm gonna paste this in here. This command is actually importing the image and notice it is referencing that file, the first file we created here with them, the containers.json. Make sure it looks something like this. If it looks like that, go ahead and hit enter and the party's starting. It gave us all the information over here about what's happening. And we have our status down here. It's active and the status message is, message is pending. Now if you're like, okay, what's going on? How long do I have to wait? We can check on it real quick with one command. Go ahead and copy and paste like before. I'm gonna paste it here. Keeping in mind with this command, it is describing the import image task, telling us what's going on, but we do need to change this part at the end to match this up here. So it'll actually look at that task and describe what's happening. So what I'm gonna do is take this, copy it up here, control C, and then down here, I'm gonna delete that last portion, paste that in. Now when I hit enter, it should tell me what's going on. Aha, new status. So currently right now, it's still active and it's now converting my OVA into an AWS machine image, which I can use to create my own virtual machine. And hitting the up arrow, we can keep running that command to check on the status. It'll go through a few statuses like uh, booting and such. It'll take a minute, so coffee break. Okay, I'll run this command once more and let's see. Perfect. So yours is complete when you see this, obviously completed. Now, quick note, some virtual machines, some OVAs from VulnHub, just won't work. So far, I've just hit one of those. Most are okay. But things are warm and fuzzy when you see this. Now time for the next step. Let's actually deploy this virtual machine. And this part is super easy. Here we go. So just as before, we'll get back to our services up here at the top left. We'll scroll down just a bit, click on compute and get back to our EC2 service. And just like before, we'll scroll down just a bit, click on launch and instance, launch instance, and we're gonna create a new VM. So here we'll name it, I'll name it breach. Keep it simple. And then here's where the magic comes in. We're gonna choose an Amazon machine image, but a custom one that we already made. So here in this section, we'll see right here, we have my AMIs, click on that. And that should reveal, bam, that import that we just did. That's the OVA we made, or we had, we used, we uploaded. That's it. So just make sure we have that selected. That's simple. And then we'll configure some more stuff like we did before. The instance type, we could probably get away with the T2 micro on this. So I'll leave it at that, just something very small. For the key pair login, this is a machine we're gonna be trying to break into, right? So we're just gonna select proceed without a key pair. I know not recommended, it's fine, it's fine, trust me. Then for network settings, let's make sure this is important. We put this in the VPC that we created. So we'll click on edit. We'll change our VPC to the breach VPC, the one that we created, yours might be named differently. And then for subnet, 
just make sure we have the private subnet selected. Notice the private in there and the naming. Might be kind of hard to see, but mine is right here. And then there's one more thing we want to change. By default, AWS will create what's called a security group, which will protect this virtual machine from access. Now, for us, we're not trying to test AWS's security. We're just trying to test the vulnerabilities of this machine. So let's remove all protections that AWS will add for it. So we're going to keep the create security group option selected. We'll scroll down here and make sure we allow everything. And all we'll do is just edit this first security group rule one. So right now it's saying allow SSH. We're going to change that. Keeping in mind, we're right here at the type box. We're going to change that from SSH to all traffic. And that should be it. Right now we have the source type being anywhere, source anything, we're solid. And that should pretty much be it. So we've added it to our network. We removed all restrictions. And if we scroll down just a bit, all the way to the bottom, we'll click on launch instance. And right now our vulnerable machine is being deployed to AWS, which is kind of crazy. So now let's meander over to our EC2 instances. And actually from the screen, we can do that. Just right over here, we see we have our breadcrumbs. I'll just click on instances. And right here, we have our two instances running or <laughs> breach is pending, but hey, our Kali Linux box is running. And actually while breach is baking, let's go ahead and access our Kali Linux box right now. So just click his instance ID to jump into him. And I want you to notice two things. First, look at his private IP address. It has an IP address in the subnet that we created, which will allow us to access and attack the breach box we uploaded. It also has a public IP address so we can remotely access him and actually start hacking. That's what we need right there. Go ahead and copy the public IPv4 address and then launch your command prompt or terminal. Launch mine right now, CMD. Now to log into the server, we will need that key that we downloaded earlier. If I go to CD downloads here in my Windows box, I should have it here. Let me LS here. Oh wait, no, DIR, sorry, Linux. It should be, oh yeah, right there, horcrux.pem. I'm gonna use that file. So the command will be ssh-i, and I'm gonna reference that key, horcrux.pem. And then I'll connect to my server. The username will be Kali by default, at the IP address. I'll paste that in there, and that should give us access. Ready, set, go. And we're in, Kali box. Now I also already have GUI access set up for the same box. Here it is, it's gorgeous, I love it so much. If you wanna know how to do that, again, check out the video I've already made, and this is that same exact box. Now let's go check on Breach. We'll get back to our instances and see if he's done booting. He is running. Let's jump into him real quick. Now something interesting happened, I did not expect this. Um, the private IP address is different from the one hard-coded, so it looks like something happened with this box and it accepted a DHCP address, so now the IP address is 142, which I think is totally fine. We'll test that here in a second. But at this point, we have a private network with a vulnerable machine and our attack machine. So now our attack machine can attack to his heart's desire. Let's try it out real quick. So here I'm on my Kali Linux terminal. First, let's see if we can uh, ping that machine. So we'll ping 192.168.110.142. Yours may be different. Just make sure you check that IPv4, IPv4 address, the private one. Okay, I can ping him. Let's do a little nmap action. Let's nmap and I'll just check if, to see if uh, port 80 is open. Nothing fancy here. Aha, it is open, which means there's probably a website on there. So I'm gonna jump into my GUI instance. This is the same Kali box, just in GUI form. Once you start saying GUI enough, it just feels weird. I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna launch Firefox here in my GUI. Uh, set it again. <laughs> I'm just gonna navigate out to 192.168.110.142. Ah, and there's the box. So here we go, just take a moment. What we just did here was create a hacking lab in AWS and it's amazing. It's costing us about, what, five cents per hour because I went with a heavier box. You may have went with a smaller box. So it's probably costing you like four cents an hour. And the cool thing is, is if I wanted to make a bigger lab, I can. If I wanna add a Windows server to this environment, I can. I can go and download more of the boxes from VulnHub and upload them with the same process and have a hacking lab that's available from wherever I go. So like legit, you can have a VNC app on your phone or your iPad and you can access the same box, just like this, wherever you are in the world. This is my new favorite way to set up a hacking lab. It's quick, it's fast, well, relatively, it's fast once you launch it. And the options are limitless. Now, of course, when you're done hacking, you'll wanna shut down those instances. So we'll get back to our AWS console, get back to our instances, and I can just select these two guys. Go to instance state and say, stop instance. Or if I'm completely done, I'll just click on terminate instance. And because AWS charges you per second that you're using their services, once you click stop, you stop paying for the EC2 service. Now I know some of you are probably like, well, Chuck, no, you're still gonna be charged for something. And yes, you're right. You see those virtual machines, while they're turned off, they do still have a disk drive and it's stored on the EBS service. So you're basically you're paying for storage in AWS when those machines are off. Now I'll tell you this, the cost for that is like, you can't even calculate it, it's so, it's so tiny. So just know when you do stop these instances and they're not running, you're basically being charged nothing, like peanuts. I think it was like three cents per month, 
<laughs> if you're gonna leave it just sitting there. So yeah, just like really cheap storage. So that was the ultimate super awesome hacking lab in the cloud. It's gonna cost you about 30 cents per day if you use it every single day. It's only gonna charge you for when you use it to the second, which is so cool. So yeah, if you wanna start hacking, you don't need to go out and buy a massive server. You don't need to get a gaming machine like I have right now. You don't even need to subscribe to any of the services that are out there, that, which are amazing, by the way. You don't need to. You can just set up a really, really cheap, costing you pennies cloud lab and start hacking right away with the resources that are freely available. And you have the added benefit of also learning how to set up your own lab and learning a bit about the cloud, which is just gonna make you better. Cause isn't this like, wasn't this cool? How cool is this? <sighs> I can't get over how cool it is. Anyways, if you haven't already, please make sure you hack YouTube today. You gotta hack that YouTube algorithm. Hit that like button, notification bell, comment, subscribe. Notification bell, did I say that? Yeah, you gotta hack YouTube today. Ethically, of course. And also let me know what you think of this. Like, is it stupid? Do you think like, is there a flaw in my design? Or is it awesome and are you doing it right now? I wanna know, let me know below. And yeah, that's pretty much all I got. I'll catch you guys next time.